welcome, welcome, you're at my corner. Are you ready for today? I've got a big list for me and you. There's lots to do. Quick, come on through. At Courtney Carrots Corner, at Courtney Carrots Corner, why don't you come and join us? At Courtney Carrots Corner. G'day everyone and welcome back to Courtney Carrots Corner. I can't even believe what we're about to do today because we're about to dive down, like really down, down into the abyss. Now there is zero light here, zilch, nothing. So you better get ready, get your best vision on because we're about to go down. <gasps> now that we're down in the abyssal zone, who do we see coming up to us except for this beautiful glowing fish, wow! The sea animals that can do this have a chemical reaction happen inside them where an enzyme reacts with two molecules called luciferins and oxygen. This results in the emission of light. I know, that's pretty impressive. While we're learning about all of this crazy, hard to remember stuff under the ocean, we may as well see what crazy name the scientists decided to come up with for this one. Oh, it's called the abyssal zone. Well, that's not as hard to say. Gosh, scientists, you wait until the fourth layer of the ocean to give us an easy name. Ah, oh, silly scientists. <laughs> now, you can say this one with me. You just say the abyss and add all on the end. Super easy. The abyssal zone. Now, you have a go. Exactly. Easy peasy. Thanks, scientists. Now, apart from the beautiful glowing fish that are under the water with us right now, who else lives in the abyssal zone? Well, there's the Bathyptororis grillato, which is a very long name and very hard to remember. Trust me. <laughs> Underneath here, we also have the blobfish. Why? That's a crazy name. I know. Well, have a look at a picture of a blobfish. This is a blobfish above water. And this is a blobfish underwater. What? That one actually looks like a fish. I know, because when you take a blobfish out of the water, it hasn't got any water pressure on top of it anymore. So it turns to goo and it doesn't keep its shape anymore. Hold your thumb out. Now imagine that you have an entire cow sitting on your thumb at all times. Now it's so heavy that it would weigh down your thumb, you wouldn't be able to keep it up. Well, because the blobfish lives underwater, that's the amount of water pressure it has on top of it all the time. I know, imagine being a blobfish and having a cow not only on your thumb, but on every single part of your body at all times. Yeah, so that's why the blobfish looks a little bit funny when it comes out of the water. Most of the animals that live down here in the abyss live near something called hydrothermal vents. You can think of these like underwater volcanoes. Because there's no light down here and it's so dark, it means it gets very cold. So the creatures come to these hydrothermal vents for warmth. The hydrothermal vents run off of magma, the molten rock, beneath the volcanic ridge system. That is so interesting. Now, not everything is so sweet and nice down here. The predators are fierce. Have you ever heard of the cookie cutter shark? Wait, the cookie cutter shark? That sounds so nice and cozy. No, the cookie cutter shark is named the cookie cutter shark because when he swims up to his enemies and takes a bite, he leaves a cookie cutter shape mark out of them. Oh my gosh, not so cute anymore, is it? No way. That's all we have for today on the abyss, but I can't wait to see you next time when we learn about the trenches which is even further down. So we better start swimming. I can't wait to see you next time. And see you, see you, bye.